This is the 23rd of December 2016 for Vincent Corporation in Tampa, Florida. We're going to run some uh, citrus pulp. This pulp has been washed, it has no bricks left in it, and um, if you squeeze it, it um, uh, it's like mashed potatoes. You can't get any water out of this. It uh, has 10% uh, moisture content. The sample we're going to run has been rehydrated. We added two parts of water for every three parts of this material to bring the moisture content uh, from 90 up to 94 percent. And we're going to try running it in a uh, scoop press to see if we can get it down to about 92 percent. This is the uh, press that we're going to use. Uh, uh, up to a certain point, it's a normal press. That is, it has a motor and a gearbox and an inlet hopper with a screw in it. And it has a screen. In this case, it's a fine perforated. We're at a old 23, uh, 23 thousandths, which is about 550 micron uh, openings on that screen. And we have a discharge cone. It has a rotating mechanism. That is, this collar right here is clamped to the shaft of the screw. As it turns, it turns this pin. The pin goes into the back of the cone, makes the cone rotate, and the cone can slide in and out. What we've done, there's another press somebody else is testing. You can see the same mechanism where an air cylinder pushes in the, uh, the mechanism against the cone. What we've got here is different. We took off the air cylinder, and instead we have an arm threaded rod and we can adjust this mechanically by turning the nut to open the cone and here we have an opening of this cone of about a 30 second of an inch and we think that's all that's required if we give it any air pressure at all the cone would slam shut and we would get none of this citrus pulp to come out as a uh, press cake so we use a mechanical fixed opening when running materials like this Okay, we've got a uh, propane burner, double boiler. We've been boiling for a couple of hours now. And here is our rehydrated sample. And what temperature have we got it up to? 142. 142. They run it at 190, uh, but 142 is the most we can get out of uh, this arrangement. So that's what we're going to run it at, 142 Fahrenheit. Okay, feeding some in here. Nothing coming through the screen yet. Okay, we're getting uh, no liquid out at all yet. Sort of a, an emulsion coming through here, but our opening is too big. Okay, we uh, tighten it down a little bit, and uh, you can see we're forcing a puree of fines through this two, three. We are getting some liquid here, some liquid separation. Yeah, where is that? There we go. But unfortunately, mostly uh, we're getting the fines to come through the screen. Get around to the other side, and everybody's working over here. And, um, and here, same sort of action, this press uh, has resistor teeth at the top, down at the bottom, so the action on the, this side of the screen is a little different than the other, but it um, doesn't look good. You can see the rotating cone mechanism. Where that collar drives the pins, that drives the cone. And the inlet hopper, it's going down very slowly. I'm going to uh, crank up the hertz. We've got a, a VFP here. We're cranking the hertz up to 120. 
and um, see if that makes any difference. We were running at 40 hertz. I thought maybe if we started slow, it might help. separation has failed entirely. Okay. Um, slowed it down to 6 hertz. Uh, it may trip out. Probably not. Uh, but at 6 hertz, see if the action turns any different. It's extreme. Uh, we still have material in the inlet hopper. Wonder what you can do with a VFD. 6 hertz, 120 hertz, you name it. No cigar. <laughs> 